Uh, Representative Winger, a question? I, I do, Mr. Chair. Thank you. John, uh, I, I have no interest <coughs> in defending Comcast or any other large corporation that's doing whatever it's doing to, to make money with its customers. My question is, is I, I guess I don't understand why the um, anger is directed at Comcast. Is there some feeling that a large, sophisticated organization like the Trailblazers, that I'm sure is heavily lawyered, didn't enter, enter into a contract that they understood, read, and helped write, and that they are not benefiting in some way or another and wouldn't have entered into the contract if they didn't benefit from it, and therefore, if fans are angry, and it sounds to me like they have a legitimate reason to be angry, Shouldn't they take that up with the organization that decided to sign a contract that prevents many of them from being <coughs> able to see it? And ultimately, I can't understand why if this isn't in the Trailblazers' best interest financially, and it sounds like just, you know, as a person out there in, you know, just a regular, not a legislator, just as a person in the state, <coughs> sounds like a bad decision to have many of your fans, your avid fans, not be able to see the games in their homes. But this is the contract they chose to sign as a private company. Um, so again, I, I, I guess I'm, I, I'm curious as to why the anger is frustrated at the people that the Trailblazers chose to sign an exclusive contract with. Uh, you know, is there some reason to believe that they've been duped in their contract or that they, w with all the lawyers they had, they didn't know what they were getting? I think you know, that would be a question if they're duped to them, but I, 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 it's a great point and it's one that I've raised. I do think the organization has some accountability. Uh, the problem is that the organization doesn't represent the fan or it doesn't represent the consumer the, the organization made a bad decision Th they have told me and I've reported <coughs> this that they believed that they would have a wide footprint I was assured when the contract was signed because I asked the question is this going to be widely available that that they were they were under the impression that this was going to be widely available when it what didn't didn't happen by that first season they said by the all-star break then it was by the end of the season we're over a thousand days now and I think you're right that the organization does have some accountability there it doesn't help the consumer it doesn't help the fan though to follow up mr. chair real briefly please okay but we've already indicated that these kinds of fights have been going on all over the country so I have a hard time believing that the trailblazer organization didn't understand with and I'm I just know that they pay lawyers large sums of money to protect their interests and their to, interests. to help them assign contracts sure so again they helped write this contract so if for them now to claim that they feel somehow duped yeah. that it that promises weren't made why weren't the promises in the contract why didn't they have an ability to say if you don't deliver on certain things you know yeah. wider you access then we're going to avoid this thing I, again i think the trailblazers are escaping from some responsibility for what they legally entered into sure and, and you know I, I would ask the same questions of the trailblazers and i've brought them on the radio show and grilled them over it but it's not going to help get the deal done they they <laughs> feel as though they've signed a contract and i think the, the real solution is a deal is made comcast i would love to see them make a ton of money and charge for their games, sell the rights to DirecTV, people can buy the NBA package. You shouldn't have to change your cable provider in order to follow a team. You just shouldn't have to do that. And I think the problem is not that uh, Comcast is uh, not getting what it wants per subscriber from DirecTV. The problem is they're caught up with the NFL package and, and other fights in other parts of the country, and they're not willing to negotiate here. They're saying they're in a negotiation. I've seen the numbers. It's not a negotiation. Thank you. Uh, other questions? Not seeing any of you. Uh, uh, thank you very thank much you. for coming and, and voicing your perspective. Uh, appreciate the, the input into this issue. And uh, still, it's very interesting. I'm still trying to figure out what uh, the Oregon legislature can do about this uh, issue or should do about this issue, if anything. Um, I lament about, uh, you know, not having access to sports programming from time to time myself. And uh, as I've shared, I, I like to watch w old Western movies in the middle of the night sometimes. And, you know, that frustrates me. I can't find them. But uh, notwithstanding that, programming uh, seems like an access issue. And I'm not sure, you know, what, you know, that Oregon has any legal authority to deal with this, but uh, it's an interesting I, I did, question. can I add one point? You know, when I walked into the building, I've never been here before. 
This is well, welcome. This is you know I walked into the building. I read what was up on the wall. And the word just was up there, and. This is a legal matter that's really between Comcast and the satellite carriers. It really is, there's a contract here that needs to, needs to come to fruition. But what's happening isn't just, and it isn't fair. Legally, is there something you can do? Probably not. Maybe you can ask Comcast to negotiate this publicly, and if they really are the victim and they're not getting the number and it's a fair number, then let all the hostility go towards this, the satellite providers. Thank you, uh, Representative Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I know that you're that you're tight on time, and I, I had a question for our, our previous council. I do think the, the core question that we need either today answer the thing we need either answered today or in the interim, if we plan to take anything up in the next full session, is you know as specifically as possible what can the legislature do and what actually would be helpful. But I'm not persuaded that there should be nothing. I'm not persuaded that this is merely a private sector fight, and we should leave it to, up to the private sector. And I want to say something about that. For the record, that argument, however general merit it might have, is somewhat challenged here. As we move away from broadcast and airwaves publicly owned to cable and satellite privately owned, uh, even as we subsidize telecommunications uh, infrastructure, <coughs> the fans are not parties to these agreements. There is not another team option. I'm not going to become a Sacramento Kings fan. You know, just because the Blazers make a bad deal, there's a role for us to consider, I think, here. Uh, the free market argument, I think, breaks down a little bit here. It takes government action to protect the intellectual property that drives this wealth. Congress passed the Telecommunications Act that opened up the markets and gave private media boost. We subsidize stadiums for sports teams. We give antitrust exemptions to sports leagues. We allow, we allow for crossing private property lines to, to lay cable. Uh, there is a role for us to, act, to ask this question, ask the kind of question that this raises. And if there is nothing that an Oregon legislature can do, then who does, right? And if we just leave for Congress where they have a few members from our state to leverage all the power they can to do something in Washington, we should answer the, ask the question, how come we can't do anything? And so I would like us to be disciplined about asking that question rather than um, rather than let it just sort of be something, well, obviously we can't do anything. Because I got people in my district, and now all of us do, who care more about the Blazers and more about sports than they do about a lot of the things we do. Mr. Chair? I'm one of them. I happen to know Representative Smith is a Lakers fan. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to know that Representative Barton asked to be off this committee, and then, off, then today <laughs> said he wanted, he was glad to be back. So, and, and by the way, I'm a bigger Blazer fan than he is. I don't even, he's, by the way, for the record, Chair, Representative Barton has, I, I ducked, <laughs> has ducked a basketball game we've been hosting every week for the last year. The state of the point, you know, I, I think he says he's a player, but he can't play. Fairness, uh, uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> The, the private lie. discourse between the two of you can be taken outside. I'd like to hear from uh, he our last testifier. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to hear from our last testifier on this issue, if you please.